Johnson is in or Helen Zile. Oh, dear. <laughs> You are coming up with terrible choices. <laughs> uh, on, 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 on the basis of knowing what someone's opinion is, even if I don't like it, yeah. I, I, I rather know who you don't like me yeah. rather than try and play. Why are you married? In the background, I'll do other things. I think I'll probably go with... It's, 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 it's less of... It's, you know, you gotta choose one. So I suppose I'd go with Helen because at least with Zille, you know, and if you don't like it, yeah. you know. I prefer that. Mm. Like I prefer a motor stream. Yeah. Yeah? I better know. Mm. Welcome to another episode of Sunday World Engage, a platform where we engage peoples of interest in the South African public life. And today our guest is none other than Mr. Musa Maimani, the leader of BUSA or BOSA, it depends how you pronounce it, former leader of the DA. He joins us today to have a conversation about a variety of political issues. Dr. Maimani, uh, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? No, I'm good, my brother. I'm strong. I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. We're, I'm, I'm, it's, my, it's my privilege to be Yeah, yeah. In fact, maybe on a lighter note, why did you stop Jumela Mahai? So it was a very good trademark for you. Ah, it's le le wana no mo Mahai so. No, 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 no. I yeah. still still continue. In fact, uh, yeah. Ke motswana so har Jumela Mahai so. Yeah. It means Mahai so must come together. Okay. No, yeah. that's good. That's good. Did you? Yeah. No, because I was surprised for Ivan. Abi di mane yet this thing going. It was a trademark, really nice. But I guess I wanna work. I wanna do my I understand. Yeah. Okay, right. So tell us about Busa. What was the strategic objective behind uh, the party's formation? I know at first it was an issue of whether it's an NGO or a party. Mm. Just tell us about the chain of the formation of Busa. So we started Busa because. You know, when I, when I left Parliament, I realized well, Parliament had stopped working for people. Number two, you had leadership that's unaccountable and furthermore, that is compromised. And thirdly, citizens and communities were not engaged in the voting process. And as you can see in the decline of voters. So I went and started a social movement because I, I honestly believe what the South Africans are among the way to. We must give power back to the people. So we engaged people in communities. We fought for the amendment of the electoral bill so that there's direct elections of people. And the net consequence, as we sit here today, is that not only has that bill now in court, it's forced government to change the way it elects people. Next year's elections are going to be different. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we said, as Build One South Africa, let's identify leaders who come from communities. We now have over... 200 leaders, competent, ethical people who are serving communities who want to represent people in government. And thirdly, we said, let's, because of those people are in their communities, let's be continuously working. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until you are elected. So in communities, Repizimola, we've been fixing boreholes, ensuring there's water in communities, working to create employment for, for young people, etc. So for us, politics is not about just Shouting. Mm -hmm. Politics really is about activism. Sure. Doing the work. So when we said build one South Africa, it then came from that idea or there were others who were seeking to divide us. South Africa is a divided nation. Yeah. When you are in Alexander, the quality of life in Alexander, as per the Harvard report recently, has not improved. Yeah. Conditions for black people still resemble those of homelands. Living standards are dropping. Unemployment is high. So the panacea for South Africa's problems is that we need to build one. Because when you look at something, you see a different environment. Sure. You see an economic hub. So let us bring it together so that we can build a South Africa that prospers together. Ensure that when we talk education of a child in this country, Regardless of where the child has grown up in, the quality prepares them for the future. Sure. Our communities are safe. All of us, collectively, 
And economically, we can all feel we have a shared prosperity. Yeah. That is why we started Build One South Africa. Yeah. And it, it must be built. It's not going to happen by 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 J sloganizing. It yeah. must be built. So I'm grateful today. We've grown in a year. We are in all communities across the country. We are represented by South Africans of different races. We also demonstrate the fact that Raspana, we can ensure that we deliver shared prosperity for all the people in this country. Mm. And man, of course, many people know you. Uh, well, at the pinnacle of your career, of your political career, you were the leader of the DA. Maybe just to explain, what broke the camel's back for you to leave the DA? So, effectively, mm. the ballot paper cannot be an expression of race. Sure. You can't go to the ballot and say, I'm voting because for this party because I'm black, I want a black party. Or voting for this party because I'm white, I want a white party. Africans party, Zulu party, no. Politics is a contestation of ideas. Sure. And when, in 2019, we were growing, growing in communities, there were some who insisted, oh, no, all we must do is go after Africans voters so that we can become a party of minority. I said, never. I did not go into politics to build another minority party. Mm. I want a party for all South Africans. Mm. So when that became a, 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 a campaign, and when it became more my life, suddenly people were starting to attack personally. I was reading articles from myself in Afrikaans newspapers. Yeah. Because they knew who they were targeting sure. to discredit me. Sure. In Afrikaans newspapers. I said, I'm not going to sit here and in many ways uh, be treated in such a manner. I cannot follow this vision. That's why I left. Still today, when we say we are building one South Africa, there are, there's no one in the DA who says, that's our thing. Yeah. Because they know it's not their thing. Yes. That's why we have to take it out yeah. and build with all South Africans. Sure. And so still today, I am, I'm grateful and privileged to be serving South Africans of all walks of life. DA was a, was, a, was a place to learn and experience. So I correct this idea of Pinnacle. Yeah. It was a good learning space. Sure. And having been from Kokasi in Soweto where we were in the ANC, I've learned what the two, if you like, parties of the past mm. represent. I bring that experience now into Bossa so that we take the thing forward. Mm. But in your time at the DA, Corey, what are the things you would say were the positives that you learned that uh, benefited to the political being that you are today? Yeah. You can't fault the fact that the DA is, as an institution, as an organization, is probably very well run and well organized. Yeah. Probably one of the few in the country that are. we've taken that institutional frame and put it in BOSA because it's very well organized, it's data centric, all of those things. So so we've come to understand that. Yeah. I also do think, Jorge, whilst philosophically I did not agree with how government must work, because when I look at a city like Cape Town, depending on which Cape Town you are at, it works. Yeah. And on another Cape Town, Kugule to Kaili Chalanga, it doesn't work. But you can't dismiss the idea that financial integrity, how we govern, is important that government works. Sure. So I'm bringing that experience going forward and I want to take it forward so that it can be a government that works for everybody. Sure. It can be fiscally prudent to ensure that it doesn't waste taxpayers' money, South Africa's money, we are able to build going forward. So, so, so there are some things that are important. And, 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 and even still today, make no mistake, I'm not a bitter person. Yeah. I actually uh, believe Jorge, that DA has its role in society. But now we need to, at a national level, begin to build a government that we are pride in, that represents all of us, that will uphold the dignity of all South Africans. And I think one of the big issues was that when I felt 
my dignity being impaired. Yeah. I had to go. You can trade many things, but you'll never trade my dignity away. And I will never force, it's one of the, 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 the rights that sit within the constitution that you can never take away from anybody. Yeah. And therefore, I want to fight for that project that the dignity of all South Africans will always be protected. Yeah. So, Akuti, one of the things that I've much spoken about is the potential of a national coalition government and probably Gauteng as well, as one of the provinces that may be ruled by a coalition government as of next year, national and uh, provincial elections. If that indeed becomes the case, and you are part of the players that must go into the negotiation table, would you work with the DA and would you work with the ANC? I've, I've tabled a 10-point plan. Yeah. In the 10-point plan, we're focused on how we keep the lights on. And that's about including other technologies that are meant for energy. We've just won this court case now to make sure schools are taken off the grid and uh, hospitals and police stations we put roof in. I've tabled a plan around crime to say, let's bring the police back down so that the police are operating on regional, provincial level so that we merge them not only with private security, but with metro police, and so that we have a bigger force yeah. and take on criminals. We have a healthcare plan. We have an education plan that says, let's move from 30% to 50%. Mm -hmm. Why I start with a plan? Never coalesce with anybody unless there's a plan on what you're trying to do. True. The coalitions that we see sometimes now, it's not a plan to say we are going to remove the ANC. That might be a stated first step. You must have a plan as to what happens to the future of even ANC voters. Sure. So that plan must say, how do we create prosperity for all? Yeah. And let's diagnose the problem properly so that we know how to deal with it. So when we say you and I are joining forces, we are doing it. So in answer to your question, if the DA does not share that plan, What's the point of working with them? We'll end up frustrated. True. If the ANC doesn't share that plan, there'll be no point in working with them. We'll end up frustrated. Sure. So let us go in there, get two million votes, bring those two million votes as the bits that sit in the middle of South Africans who share my values. Let's come together. And where there are parties that say we share that plan and those values and and I use the plan because the plan is important. Sharing values sometimes can be debatable. Okay, sure. Plan. So that when you table a state of the nation address, you are not giving us convoluted things. You say, that June we are going to do this. In September we are going to do that. Share the timelines. One year, two year, three year, five years. Here's the things. So that every year you come and account to that. Then, come next year, we can determine who will then work with. And if the DA, the broader coalition, MPC comes together, anyone says, we like the plan, we agree with you, let's put a government together. If the ANC, who have brought us to this mess, say to themselves, eh, eh, and I'm sad for the ANC, to be honest with you, I really yeah. am. But what I think is important to note, Corey, we will never form a formal coalition with the ANC because they will get their votes, but they've shown where they brought us to. So what I, what I do think in its net effect is let's focus on even fighting for those plans. Even if we end up in no coalition, we can then end up to use those votes to say these are the things we fight for. If you are not going to fix the schools. Like Honam, that's why we went to court. We won that thing. They must put that thing together. If they didn't want to do that, we'll keep fighting. Sure. So as part of this uh, coalition talk, if it indeed it becomes uh, the case, there's uh, the so-called uh, multi-party charter it started as a moonshot pact. Many people expected that uh, you would be part of it, but you were not. Were you approached by the multi-party charter partners or moonshot pact partners? They did approach us. Yeah. And we sent them the plan. So I stick to, to my word. And then when we realized, Corre, even if you bring all the parties together, you still don't get over 50% of the line. That's the first thing. The second thing is, what's the internal glue there? What keeps people together? 
Yeah. I will coalesce with people who say, let's bring a party and put it on the ballot. That's a better coalition. Sure. Then we are talking. But to form a part of a charter is like, I don't know if you remember my brother, there was a time when all the big clubs decided to start their own parallel Champions League, if you follow football. Sure, sure. These ones want to do the same. Yeah. Start their own league. Super they are going to compete against each other yeah. again. Yeah. What for? Yeah. Let's, if we're going to put a party, let's put one on the ballot. If we're not going to, uh, let's rather than focus on saying what happens after the elections. And also the voters that want to vote for boss. They say, Musi, we are happy to vote for you. We can't just say, Hore. because at the end of the day, your greatest dilemma in the multi-party charter is that a voter who says, so what's the point? If I vote for Action SA, I might as well be voting for Freedom Front Plus. I might as well be voting because they're all uh, two million votes in the middle. Let's bring them. they one boss. Yeah. Mm. You, you had an option when you left the DA to could have joined a, another party. There's many parties, new parties even. Could have been the ANC, could have been the IFP or any other party, EFF, or even Action SA, because you were very close to Mr. Herman Marshall, the leader of Action SA. In fact, probably, let's zoom in there. Why did you not join Action SA? When you are trying to fix for a problem, mm -hmm. going from one, part, from one party to the next creates this problem. Have you really spent time? To, what are you fixing? Or are you just fixing for your career? I don't want to fix for my career. I, I've been in business before. I've been in parliament. And I've long committed to public service. So I'm not, I'm called to this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for a job out of this thing. And I find sometimes when people just move from one place to another, it would have been tempting. Call the DA people who are also, come with us, let's create a DA-like. Mm. I wanted to spend a year or two crafting the vision, knowing what I believe is right and is wrong with this country. Mm. It's not just building a vehicle. You must know the destination, because when you know the destination, then the vehicle, you must decide, ki scooter, ki taxi, ki aeroplane, what is it? Sure. So I wanted to spend that time, and I'm grateful I had that time. Mm. Our models are different. Actually, say if you call them now, they'll give you a list of their candidates. You don't know them. Now I've gone out and said, let's identify them in communities and let them stand so that you can interrogate them. I've been revealing them so that people can say, ole kis mangma, kimalulek, kis mangmang from... Uh, this this province. What corruption have they done? Can we in, interrogate them well before the elections? And it's publicized, we put it in the media so that people can study and interrogate those people. Sure. And then furthermore, we said to ourselves, on a policy front, I've never agreed with some of the positions that Action SA have taken. For example, on issues such as immigration. Mm -hmm. That's not my position. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to sit here and advance a view that says, for us to win the elections, we must now stoke up that issue. And then there are other parties and parties who stand up and say, we need mass deportations. No, no, no. We need a different view on what immigration must look like. Yeah. So you can't just join in for the sake of just saying, hey, we were together there, let's go. Sure. Unless you interrogate what you want to go. So my view on even immigration of course, strengthen your borders. Of course, adjudicate visas quickly. But also deal with it on a foreign policy point of view. Go deal with ZANU in, Z in Zimbabwe. Go deal with, with uh, uh, challenges that occur in countries, particularly who then are in your neighboring space. But then furthermore, on an international spectrum, let's understand what we are trying to build South Africa. So if you want to come to South Africa, it's not just giving you legal status here. It's also making sure that you follow South Africa's values. You are integrated into the South African system so that you can't come here and set up little Lagos or set up little whatever. Yeah. Chinatown. Can't. Come here. You work within the South African system and laws. I can't go to, to Germany and when I arrive in Germany, Egi village, Abatswana. You, you can't do that. 
If I'm in Germany, I must deal with what the Germans do. If you're in South Africa, I must deal with what South Africans do. Yeah. And I'm saying people can come in and integrate into that. For sure. You are also famously known for coining the term ANC, I suffered, which was part of a elections campaign advert when you were at the DA. But zooming in on the term ANC, I suffered, where do you think the ANC lost the plot? The ANC faltered in this way. Once it achieved such a magnificent task of 1994, it failed to transform itself progressively as a party that governs with a vision for the future. Sure. And in the beginning, they were invested in that project, but it never was handed over to future. So what happens in that instance is that you end up with a party that, because it doesn't understand the purpose of governments, it doesn't have a vision for it, it captures the state and it privatizes the state and builds an ecosystem around it of people who benefit <clears throat> from that capture. Mm. And therefore, what then started to happen is that political connections became higher than any form of competence and ethical leadership in public service. Economic transformation became benefit for certain few politically beneficial individuals. So when they talk about an increase in the number of uh, industrialists, they don't really mean people who are going to make jobs. What they really mean, they talk about people who are connected to them who can benefit shares from the first economy. Sure. Thirdly, naturally, corruption became the issue. Because once you don't know what, you, what this money is for, you think it's for you. So then they personalized it yeah. and benefited. And lastly, the NC lost its plot when it failed to recognize that it is servants of the people. Mm. And once that was lost in the organization, I can tell you as night follows day, in that sense, the NC has got no energy, no young people, no future vision for this country. That's why young people are not participating in the NC. Yeah. And when I listen to even their youth leagues, I hear they are fighting problems of the, of the parents of the ANC. Mm. They don't have an idea of where this country must go. We need new in that. We get, if we fail to get new leadership, new vision for this country, South Africa is falling behind. Mm. It's not just competition amongst ourselves. It's also competition on the international platform. I was in Nairobi last week talking about Africa and the vision for Africa in Tanzania. Those countries are starting to make progress ahead of us. Payment points, Innovation, fintech, Africa is, is leaving us behind. You can go to Namibia. The efficacy of the port in Namibia is now becoming much more than the port in Devon. So when industry moves, it will dock somewhere. So we are being left behind because the NC no longer, and it governs as though it no longer wants to improve the quality of lives of South Africans. And more specifically, it governs as though black lives do not matter. Mm. That's why still today, it can be safe to say that life, living standards of black South Africans still resemble those of homelands, as the, as the Harvard report just reported. Mm. So and they haven't refuted that fact, by the way. True, true. One of the foremost problems that we have, and the many problems that as a country we have, is the issue of load shedding. What is your view on load sharing and how it could be resolved once and for all? Firstly, there are multiple issues to load sharing. Yeah. But the most important one is that it's been poor governance mm -hmm. in the beginning and poor decision making. Load sharing is now 17 today. We must wish it happy birthday. Mm. Next year it will have a right to drive. Mm. Load sharing. <laughs> and right to vote. <laughs> the right to vote <laughs> next year. <laughs> That's how old load shedding is. Yes. Yeah. So which tells you it's a problem they don't want to solve. Sure. It's a problem they are okay with because now what's starting to happen is that when the, someone says the system is not broken, it works for somebody. Mm -hmm. And I think load shedding works for some people. Mm -hmm. Because then they can corrupt the system, they can deliver inferior coal, they can uh, up 
appoint leaders who will work only for the organization. Let's not remember, let's not forget the role of Itachi in terms of some of the building of boilers uh, that speak to Kusile and many other places. And 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 and, and, and that whole transaction. So, mm -hmm. so, so, so you can see well, it's a chronic issue. My suggestion, quite strong, to keep the lights on. Let's begin to take on the reduction of demand. That's mm -hmm. a short-term issue. And the reduction of demand says that as I went to court, let's put rooftops on schools, hospitals, uh, police stations, so that you, you reduce that demand. Sure. And households will do likewise. Let's introduce build own operate models so that people can augment energy. Already big sectors, energy consumers, such as mining sectors, are starting to engage in that. Thirdly, let's capacitate municipalities so that not only do we deal with the financial revenue of ESCOM, but municipalities can articulate and distribute energy, energy in a much more effective manner. Sure. And thirdly, and, or maybe fourthly, let's deal with the financial burden that ESCOM puts on consumers so that that entity, in how we manage it, we can begin the process of setting up as these build own operates come to on board, we can typically what's called wheeling of energy. You can wheel it from one space to another and there can be a bidding process for energy. And then lastly, you can't get away from the fact that uh, the future in the production of energy is going to be in hydrogen and therefore how do we introduce hydrogen over a long period of time so that it creates the base load that we need so that we stabilize. Renewables, when it comes to gas, oil, I mean, in, in terms of solar, wind, all of that, will do a job, but we're a long way from that. We're 10 years away. So what I'm saying to people is give BOSA two years in government will fix load shedding. Mm. Jobs, jobs, jobs. It's yeah. a big issue. Unemployment, in fact, is the biggest problem uh, we're facing in the country. We are world leaders in that regard in terms of unemployment, especially among the young people, well over 50% uh, youth unemployment. Practically, if Buza is in government, how would it resolve the issue of unemployment and how long would it take you to resolve that situation? Look, our focus is, let's put a job in every home. Yeah. Right? And why that's important is because when you look at South Africa's households, mm -hmm. You can't have, a, in some people, more. everyone is working, in another house you arrive there, no one is working. And the reason I say let's focus on a job in every home is because I'm not here to promise people to say, give boss a chance, we'll have uh, full employment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's not do that. Yeah. Let's put a job in every home. Sure. And to achieve that, there are a couple of things that are key. The macroeconomic conditions must be such that on four components those things are on. We've spoken about energy as one, yeah. but we must discuss the issue of logistics. Yeah. I've just come back from KZN. What Transnet is doing there is sabotage to the economy. Mm. And people there must be not only dismissed as incompetent in certain instances. And as black people we must say that. Yeah. We, some people have criminalized the institution and must be dealt with. Uh, it's, it's economic sabotage the way that pot is working at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Because the cost of goods come next year, couple May, supply of goods is going to be low. Mm -hmm. So we must fix Transnet. We must deal with the digital economy. Okay. Why are we still today, now we have to still fill in forms manually, matter we WhatsApp each other to sure. communicate. Sure. So let's build with the digital infrastructure. And then lastly, as, as we've dealt with logistics and all of that, let's build with the competence of the state. So those conditions must be in place. Right? Yeah, sure. And BOSA is working hard to try and fix those and making sure that citizens are safe because no economy is going to grow where people are dying every day. Mm. There are more people dying today in South Africa, even over this year, than what is going on in Russia and Ukraine. So let, let's, let's understand that. Let's declare a state of emergency on crime. Let me park that for one second. In my recent experience, we set up a, a fund that is able to democratize capital sure. so that people who want to start businesses can do that. I want to support SMMEs. We've committed over 200 billion rands in terms of uh, investing in the, in, in the township economy typically because we think that why should uh, only a few people benefit from working closer to home? And the business processing opportunity 
is still massive in this country by setting up their variety call centers, business operation centers, all of those in townships because internet is available, it must be made available. Sure. I want to introduce a national civilian year where young people can spend a year spending six months internship, six months that, uh, uh, getting work experience because you eradicate the backlog behind that. So that's it's targeting youth more specifically. And then I'm committed to the idea of infrastructure growth because the backlog in South Africa is infrastructure building. So when we do that, we introduce expanded public works programs so that more and more young people can participate in working. Mm. We begin that way because when we stimulate SMMEs, we help high industrialization, we can then begin to see an uptick in the number of jobs that must be created. And through, through the big infrastructure build programs, we can then make sure people are working. Because where are the infrastructure deficits? They happen to be in townships, etc. If we build a bridge in Soweto, let the people of Soweto work. If we build a bridge in Kailicha, let's get people in Kailicha to work. Yeah. One of the recent uh, most spoken about issues is the Competition Commission report around rent manipulation as to the admission of the Standard Chartered Bank. Uh, which has created a lot of, it's a political hot potato as it were. There are certain parties that are staying far from it. Our government is completely missing in action in terms of voicing their opinion on the issue. What is Bosa's opinion on that report? Yeah, look, first of all, let's, let's get the timelines. So yeah. This is not something that happened yesterday, it's a number of years back. True. Let's understand its net value. Mm -hmm. um, so anyone who manipulates currencies to whatever decimal points and the spread as an issue, that is a crime. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I think as the Competition Commission has found and the admission, I do think the, the fines are, uh, are relatively not dissuading of behavior. I often find that sometimes within banking sectors, you budget in for fines. So the fines then become part of your model of business. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would urge strongly that those who are involved must be, that we must look at the best mechanisms to increase the number of fines. And then the ministry had introduced post the uh, competition commission a view upon which uh, currency manipulation can be criminally charged or form of collusions. And therefore there must be a prefer preferred ways for those individuals involved so that they, they are prosecuted and criminally charged because that will dissuade behavior. But let's also understand, and I think it would be fair to say, in a world where there's a lot of war on this issue, to what level can you influence a currency? Mm -hmm. Our currency is influenced by multiple variables. These transactions, when you read the report and you read multiple, um, uh, 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 when you read the report and you read what the Competition Commission has found, you discover it's manipulation within cents, not within rands. Mm -hmm. We can sensationalize it, but it's manipulation within cents. And sure, in high volume transactions, a manipulation of a number of cents has big benefit for a few people. Mm -hmm. But the weakening of the currency that is the rand, it's not to say if it wasn't manipulating, if it wasn't being manipulated as others would like to purport, it would have been 15, not 90. Mm -hmm. it, you can't do that variables. It's not the, it's not the quantum that's like that. For sure. So, so, so if you then live with that perspective, then you must ask yourself the question, why is our currency so weak, given the fact that when President Ramaphosa took over as president, the rand was trading at 12 rand to the US dollar, and now it's at 19 rand. What has happened in that, in that period? Along with being grey listed, along with making sure capital flows are not happening, we must also put in those variables. That's why the government is missing in action because for them, yes, sure, they not manipulated in physical terms, but the perception of issues around corruption, etc., have also impacted how people feel they must trade in South Africa. Sure. So, 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 so we must place the two issues in context. So at one level, all banks that have been involved in this matter must be investigated and as I've stated before, but we must also deal with how we strengthen currency because it's good to have a strong currency that helps you particularly in your import markets, yeah. to ensure that the cost of goods that are imported in the country are not at a, at a cost that consumers cannot, cannot afford. So, so we must also deal with how we strengthen currency so we stabilize it uh, and, and be able to ensure that our trade balance as a country is continuously strengthened, not weakened. Sure. Uh, I would say one of the things that are 
controversial in political discourse is the funding of political parties. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I think just this week uh, the IEC released uh, the declarations mm. uh, by, by those parties that declared, and there was a whole lot of controversy about uh, EFF not declaring after their big bash in July. Who funds uh, BOSA? So, as you would know, we have, uh, in our last declarations, we we declared over a few people, there are a few trusts that have, we're not a wealthy organization, so yeah. there are a few trusts we have. Uh, Mr. Moshal, who funds a number of parties, has funded us, so we are not uh, worried to disclose that. We have disclosed, we've declared all our, all, all, all our donations, etc. I, myself, have had to put my own money into the organization. We've asked people. Uh, people like Mr. Biko and many others have contributed to it. But ordinary members do. Mm -hmm. Ordinary people come in, make contributions to the organization. Party funding, sometimes we can make that the rod with which we want to hit everybody. But the reality of it is that it's transparent. We know it. It has its own limitations. This 100,000 limitation is a problem because in certain instances, if we let it continue, it will enhance people from finding ways to do things. Furthermore, I do think when you are, it's not big versus small, mm -hmm. it's old versus new. Mm -hmm. The new ones do not benefit from uh, the party funding that's in parliament. Remember when the act was passed, yeah. it also said that it will increase party funding that's given by the taxpayer to the political parties. So how is it that a party like uh, cope will end up with more money yet it's on its way out but because they were in parliament in 2019 they benefit from over a billion rands of taxpayers money that's divvied up amongst the parties mm -hmm. it doesn't help bring new ways of doing it politics like ideas must come and change and new ones must take place so i'm not worried about these old ones We've got to bring new and take South Africa forward. So, so I'm comfortable. Uh, we, we are working hard to, and I will invite people. I'll abuse this platform. Fund Bossa. You can go even to. We've announced the way where you can even go to a Spaza shop, sure. bring in your twenty rands, your fifty rands. It's there in the payment point. You can find Bossa there. Contribute that way. We are asking people because it's a grassroots movement for people to be able to participate. Mm. To wrap up, uh, Mr. Maimane, let's just play a little fun game. I'll give you a multiple choice question. Oh, and you must choose <laughs> you must choose one answer and you don't have the option of saying you don't choose. None of the above. No, no, no. You okay. don't have that option. Mm -hmm. It's two options, you pick one. So let's start this way. President Zuma or President Ramaphosa? You at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with both, I guess. Yeah. Uh, can I give commentary and then vote? No, vote and give commentary. Uh, look, I think you can't take away from the fact that at least President Zuma had a plan for this country, whereas President Ramaphosa doesn't have one. But at the same time as that is that uh, when we thought well, President Zuma would work for black South Africans, he took the capital and gave it to other people instead oh. of doing it. So. I guess on the basis of, on balance of probability, none of the above, but if I had to choose, I think having to dismantle state capture, even though I still think it's sophisticated and it's going on, I might have to settle for President Ramaphosa because I'm hoping he will at least come to uh, the IEC center and hand over to the next president of South Africa. So that's good. Mm. So I'd vote for him. That's a president good. Ramaphosa. Yeah, yeah sure. Johnson Yezin or Helen Zile? Oh, dear. <laughs> You are coming up with terrible choices. <laughs> uh, on, 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 on the basis of knowing what someone's opinion is, even if I don't like it, yeah. I, I, I rather know who you don't like me, yeah. rather than try and play, why are like you married? In the background, I'll do other things. I think I'll probably go with, it's, 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 it's less of, it's, you know, you got to choose one. So I suppose I'd go with Helen because at least with Zile, you know, if you don't like it, yeah. you know, I prefer that. Mm. Like I prefer a motor stream. Yeah. Yeah? I better know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, how many by the way? Why? I think 
look, I've worked with both of them, mm -hmm. and again, but I, I think collaboration is also an important thing. Sure. Um, and, you know, I like both. I mean, I've worked with Ndata Mashava, so I know him well. Um, yeah, neither here nor there, so on balance, I just would favor youth. Morgan, for, for the age, people's <laughs> I still like him. Herman is, my, Herman is a good friend of mine. Uh, yeah. Let me say that. Yanele and Mekoni are very, very good friends. Of sure. Me. Sure. Should you ask my name or Gaelin McKenzie? Hmm. Uh, sure. I. I've worked with Julius, I haven't worked much with Gaten, mm -hmm. so I guess it would have to be Julius because I've worked with him and I at least have some, I, I knew what was going on in 2016 and I could trust, you know, Julius and I might disagree on things, but if I said to Julius, Julius in a coalition, bro, we need to achieve one, two, three and four, and even though we had to debate the issue backwards and forwards, when I worked with him in 2016 in Joburg, if he said, let's do this, or, or if I said let's do this and we agreed, that would be done. It's not like come so it will change. Sure, sure. So consistency. It may be consistently bad, like mm -hmm. Chiefs or whatever. No, Kaiser Chiefs, my club. Yeah. I still have to. <laughs> Famous <laughs> business, FC. Ah, so I I'm a course, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know even why I raised it. I yeah. yeah. In fact, by the way, maybe on a lighter note to finish up the my money. Outside politics on sports, since you've raised the issue of Kaiser Chiefs, why why Kaiser Chiefs and not on the I'm a Soweto. I'm a Soweto, and also keep in mind, I was in Soweto. You know, I always think how people choose their football clubs yeah. depends entirely on what was happening when they were growing up. Yeah. In some ways, because when like my son Konano, my son will support Yenega Munela straight. We don't debate, and it's my father's birthday today. Who's a proud Bacaneer. Sure. So I wish him a happy birthday, but. But when, when, when I was growing up, I grew up in Lebo, Lebo 16 Valve, both DDA schools, Shane, Pula Maketa, Lebo Fani Madita. So I come from that Kaiser Chiefs um, era. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I always tell people, you, you can be loyal to your football club, but not your political party. So mm -hmm. don't say. <laughs> so, 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 so I grew up in Soweto, and Chiefs had been dominant at the time, you'll remember. We were winning everything, and because El Pelo Moya will come back. Marwar uh, uh, we know mostly because they were. I that. No, 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 no. I remember even also of changing. I remember also. Uh, I also nah, nah, When it comes to football, I mean, when I even look at the British league. Yeah. I suffered with Liverpool when we were winning nothing. nothing. Yeah. Literally from Boba John Barnes and all of that, that generation I watched with Ian Rush and many others. And then after that, I watched the drought. What Man United are going through now. Yeah. It happens. And then, and then after a while, you wake up and you say, okay. And then you win the league and then suddenly you've got a club that's competitive, that's winning. And so that's how, so that's how I view it. Uh, I've taken it like that. So it's Liverpool on one side, it's Chiefs on the other side. But I'm... Um, you know, I love playing. I play myself. So I play football. I love playing football. Uh, and so, you know, you just kind of, uh, you are in there. At least at least it's something that, that distracts me away from this project that is South Africa. For sure. In closing, Dede Maimane, uh, what can South Africans expect from Mose Maimane and Bosa in the coming future, be it next three months or even upon the elections as well? Two million votes, we're going out to register people. And often I always say to people, what do we need to fix in South Africa? If you yeah. vote, I want to build the best government. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, government, we've got some good people here and there, but in the main, we are embarrassed. Mm -hmm. we are, government is not. So I want to build the best government. So what you can expect from BOSA is that the timetable is such that we, we, are, we are growing in more provinces. We've just finished a very successful voter registration weekend. We were in over 25% of the voting districts presence there. We registered young people. We're in contact with our audience. We're building capacity in that score. Uh, we head to a policy launch in January. I will talk about the, the future of how South Africa will want to see it and I'll table that plan to show what South Africa will look like February. 
naturally I'm encouraging young people it will be the next registration we can let them register and then after that we go ground in communities all the way towards the elections naturally as these things are occurring keep in mind uh, at the end of January is the time when Minister Kosiensu has been told to install all the things in hospitals places so I'll be there with him fighting that battle uh, so I'll be deploying BOSA people to make sure every school has got an has got a has got solar panel, especially at the start of the, the year, police stations, etc. And then uh, after that, uh, let's go and shock people at elections so that after that, Ramaphosa can come to the IC and hand over to the next government. Hmm. Oh, in fact, I almost forgot. This is really, really closure now. Palestine-Israel uh, conflict. Hmm. It's a divisive issue. It's a worldwide issue. It's a political issue. Where do you stand in that regard? One, we must all condemn violence. Mm -hmm. Two, I recognize the fact that the issue there, having seen both sides, we need a two-state solution. There can be no... So the ceasing of violence, the getting back to the two-state solution issue, to inviting the broader societies and countries around that so that we can keep the peace stable, and furthermore, I do think, and as much as I condemn Hamas's attack, I think more than anything, the continuation of more bloodshed that's occurring is not something that we can sustain. And so I think we need to be able to bring about a ceasefire that's more permanent, a release of all hostages from both sides, and a freeing up of humanitarian aid to end up in Palestine where it's needed and ultimately over a long period of time for us as a global community because the issue there is not people are marching in South Africa, they are marching in the US, they are marching in that. What you don't want is a place where we have to be in perpetual conflict that says I am Jewish therefore there's that or I am Palestinian therefore there's that or Muslim that we don't want to enter into that world. The world certainly cannot afford that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we need a, a broader sense upon which we bring stability and peace and a focus there. And for Africa and South Africa's role, I've been talking a lot, even in Tanzania, about a pan-African vision that I, that I put on the table, is that our role is to ensure that peace and stability occurs. Because as, as, as a continent, we've seen what violence and coups do. So my stance there has been that having, having, having engaged both sides. Mm. Thank you so much uh, sir, for granting us the opportunity. Uh, we are truly grateful. Probably we'll have you again, be it closer to the elections or after elections when you are in parliament about the policies you're going to be pursuing and stuff like that. Yeah, how probably? Say, I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> My brother, thank you. I'm back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 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 Thank Bosa. Is it Bosa or Busa, by the way? Bosa. Bosa Gimana. Bosa. O Busa Gimana. Yeah. <laughs> Bosa Gimana. The leader of Bosa built one South Africa. One South Africa. Former leader of the DA uh, who joined us today in the conversation. Join us next time when we reveal our next person of interest. To you at home, probably this is our last conversation. Join us next year. We wish you a happy Christmas to those that are Christians. We wish you a happy new year. But overall, have a happy festive season. Thank you very much. From our team, Sunday World Engage. Salute. Salute.